As a main speaker, we have our brother Frank, who is getting ready maybe to come in a few minutes, he's going to be here. And truly, to be quite honest with you, I would wish the whole of London were here present with us. If they knew what was happening in the kingdom of heaven, they would stop all the shopping and taking cars to garages and come here and hear the living word of God that can say it, that can prepare because we know the Lord is coming soon. And truly, it's our joy to have our brother in this place and we, by the grace of God, we are acquainted with his ministry. But for all of you who don't know his ministry, all we can tell you, when you hear the word, receive it prayerfully. Amen. This is not just another preacher. This is a ministry confirmed by the Lord himself. Amen. And he's written many, many books which are a blessing and have been and they are continuing still to be a great blessing to the body of Christ all over the world. And so we are in expectation that the Lord is going to bless us. Of course, Brother Branham Brother Bran himself also, as a prophet of God, he saw this ministry functioning by prophetic dreams and, you know, vision. As we all know, a German eagle flying over Africa, but not only over Africa, German eagle here in England too. And we praise God that we are part of this. Praise God that also you have been invited to be part of this or what God is doing in this present time. But before I invite Brother Frank to come, could we all take a moment and pray? Dedicate yourself to the end of the Lord. Ask the Lord to speak to you personally. That He may bless you personally. You have not come to accompany or see somebody have come to hear the Lord Jesus Christ. But the Lord, as we know, is not here physically. He uses man. And this is a ministry ordained to take the pure word of God to the ends of the earth. And you happen to be here, we believe this is a divine orchestration or a divine arrangement for you to be here, not an accident. And I believe God is going to bless you rich. Let us all take a moment of prayer and I'll ask my brother friend to come forward for the word of God. Let us all pray and then give us a second hand of the Lord.
I began to share the word of God with others. Let me also say this. In 1955, Brother Brandon came to Germany and Switzerland. It was the first time that I saw Bible days. Bible days. A prophetic, apostolic teaching ministry. At that time, I had no knowledge of the promise that the prophet would come before the great day of the Lord. I'm from the first teaching, from the first few minutes. I knew in my heart that this is a man sent from God. And of course, at the end of the service, not only did this man of preach, but he also prayed for the sick and for the brothers and sisters. The same, the same ministry that our Lord has repeated before my eyes. I saw, I saw what John wrote or what is written in the Gospel of John, the first chapter. Before Nathaniel called you, I've seen you. Or Philip called you, I've seen you under the tree. For every person, Brother Brennan prayed, the door showed him a vision. He would tell the person where they came from, the city, and even the country and what they had. I came to know by the grace of God in these meetings about the promises of God to this day. And in 1958, at the Voice of Healing Convention in Dallas, Texas, when all the great renowned Evangelists were gathered in a very special convention which was arranged by the voice of healing by God Minsay. In the evening, Brother Branham was the main speaker. And I could see the difference during the day meetings in the mornings and afternoons. All the others were preaching in the evening services. Brother Brandon was ministering. And I saw the difference. I saw the difference. One day, second day, third day. And then I went to see Brother Brandon, asking him what the difference is, I see the difference, but what is it all about? What is the purpose of this ministry? And then he shared his testimony that the Lord called him for a special purpose to bring the message before the second coming of Christ. At the end of that conversation, on June, it was also June 11th, in 1958, Brother Branham said, Brother Frank, you will return with this message to Germany. And friends, you know my testimony, when the Lord called me, and Brother Brandon confirmed it. Now, I look back 
for exactly 50 years, since 1962, when the Lord called me with an audible voice, to have gone from continent to continent, and all together I had the privilege to visit 157 countries. The Lord just opened the doors, opened the doors and the hearts right from the very, very beginning. So now I look back to these many years and my direct impression is that we are very, very close to the second coming of Christ. Absolutely very, very close. And if you watch the news about Jerusalem, about the negotiations between the Vatican and Israel, between the Palestinians and also with Israel, it's very close that the covenant will be made. In our German internet, you could read repeatedly the two statements or words from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. These were headlines, headlines. Now the time for peace and safety has come. The two words, peace and safety, were headlines in the internet. Peace and safety. And as we all know, the Apostle Paul, by the Holy Spirit, was writing, when they shall say, peace and safety, then, then, sudden destruction will come upon them. But also in that connection, in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, it's very interesting. Right in the first verse, the apostle writes, you don't need to know about the day or the hour, but when you see and when you hear these things come to pass, then you know that the time is at hand. It's, it's a divine order. And I tell you why. Because in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, we have about the return of Christ, about the dead in Christ to rise first. And then for us who live in Christ to be changed and be taken up to meet the Lord in the air. That is chapter 4. And in chapter 5, you need not to know the direct day because nobody knows the day of the hour. But when we say Bible prophecies fulfilled, then we understand understand that it is very near even at the door. So by the grace of God we also understand that this is the calling out time, the preparation time, the separation time, the restoration time to restore all things back to the beginning. And as the Apostle Peter could write in 2 Peter chapter 1, we were eyewitnesses of his glory. The apostles, the three apostles, were on Mount Transfiguration when the voice came and was heard, This is my beloved son, hear ye him. You have Matthew chapter 3, 
Verse 17, this is my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. That's the first part. The second part, this is my beloved son. Hear ye him. So the two things must join. They must come together in our spiritual lives. First, we must recognize our Lord of who He is and we all understand there's only one God, one God, not two, not three, there's one God. But people misunderstood, misunderstood because they did not have divine revelation. So if we go back to the Word of God, over 6,000 times in the Old Testament, we have the term Elohim Yahweh, Lord God, Lord God, throughout the Old Testament. And if you go to eternity, it was God. A spirit in light and light. But at the beginning, this one God came forth into a visible form of appearance, speaking all things into existence, walking in the Garden of Eden, creating Adam in his own image. So you have the two terms. You have Elohim for God. You have Yahweh for the Lord. And Elohim is the manifestation in the visible form is Yahweh throughout all the Old Testament. The same God, the same God revealed himself in the New Testament as our Father in heaven and in his only begotten Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, one God, but manifesting himself to accomplish his own plan of salvation. The manifestation of God as Father was for the purpose to take us back the sons and daughters of God according to Galatians chapter 4 and place us back into our original relationship which we lost through what happened in the Garden of Eden. As you know, Father friend, spoke about the Godhead. He rejected the teachings of Trinity in trying baptism. And we have to say this. And we don't say this because we wish to say it, but because we must say it. Only in the Old Testament, as I said, God revealed himself. Even as the angel of the covenant, even in the pillar of fire, in different ways, but always one and the same God. In the New Testament, the same God was manifested, as I said, to take us back into our relationship with God. Therefore, our Lord could say, I go to my Father and to your God, to my God and to your God. We have to understand this and also have the experience of being born again by the seed of the Word of God. Just as our Lord was the promised seed from the garden of Eden. And then the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. So the Word of God is the same 
and before you can be born again, you must have the seed of the word of God in your soul. Otherwise, you play religion. There is no birth without the seed, even in the nature. There has to be a uniting in love first. There has to be a seed first before a birth can take place. So it is when our Lord said, you must be born again. He also said, the seed is the word of God. Amen. Matthew chapter 13, Mark chapter 4, Luke chapter 8. The word is the same. And many Christians don't understand this. One of the questions I should answer today is about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. But before we can speak about the baptism of the Holy Spirit, we must speak about the new birth. Because our Lord said, that which is born of flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. And therefore, He said, you must be born again, otherwise you cannot see the kingdom of God. And then if you go to 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 23, we are born again by the seed of the word of God. Also James chapter 1 verse 18. So the importance is this beloved, through the blood that was shed on the cross of Calvary, our sins our sins were forgiven. God was in Christ, reconciling the world with Himself. And our Lord and Savior was the Lamb of God slain for us. And our names were written in the Lamb's Book of Life before the foundation of the world. But please understand, the first part is the forgiveness of our sins, which takes care of the old man, our past, our life without Christ, in sins and trespasses and whatever has been. So we come to the Lord and ask Him to forgive us and ask Him to receive us. But after we came to the Lord, we must receive the word of God as the seed into our hearts. And then the Spirit of God comes upon the word. And in the seed is the germ of life. In the seed is the germ of life. And so it was with the birth of our Lord. First, the promise of the word was given to Mary. And the moment she believed that promised word, the Holy Spirit overshadowed her and the Savior was born. In the same way, when we hear the word of God and we say it, the Holy Spirit comes upon the saint of the word of God and we are born again. The second part, then the third part, is to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And beloved, this is a very, very hard question. But if you go back to the Word of God, Matthew chapter 3, verse 11, John the Baptist gave the testimony, I baptize you in water. And he that cometh after me will baptize you with the Holy Ghost and fire. Two things. Not only Holy Ghost, but Holy Ghost and fire. This is very, very important. Even Brother Brennan spoke about this subject in the sermon 
the anointed ones at the end time. Many are anointed, but they're not even born again. They're anointed in the second world. As Father Brennan drew three circles, the soul, the spirit, and the body, and he made the statement. You can be baptized with the Holy Ghost in the second birth and not be born again in your soul. And if you now look into the Pentecostal movements, right after the charismatic meetings, everybody thinks they are filled with the Holy Spirit, but, but are they born again? Had they received the word of God and the seed into their hearts? Or are they just dancing, having the music and praising God? But here is the problem. Matthew chapter 15 and Mark chapter 7. Our Lord said in vain to the worship my teaching for doctrines, the commandments of men. Every, every worship is in vain if you are in the doctrines of men. God cannot respect the doctrines of men. God can only respect the blood that was shed for us. In reference to the forgiveness of our sins, He can only respect His word and therefore our Lord says, Woman, the time will come when they will worship God in spirit and in truth. And before you can worship God in spirit and in truth, the word of God, which is the truth, must be revealed to you by the Holy Spirit. And then it becomes a divine reality. But just to mention this, beloved, in the original baptisms of the Holy Ghost that on the day of Pentecost, there were two things. There appeared, according to Acts chapter 2, right from the beginning, cloven tongues. Cloven tongues. Tongues. Before the Holy Spirit filled those 120, the holy fire of God touched their tongues. That if, if they should speak with new tongues, the tongues have to be renewed. They should speak with new tongues, not speak with old tongues and pretend to be baptized with the Holy Ghost. That is now the case with all the charismatic meetings. And we have at the present time 550 million Pentecostals and charismatics and they all claim to have the Holy Spirit. But let's say this again. They should speak with new tongues. And before we can speak with new tongues, they have to be renewed. They have to be sanctified by the holy fire of God. Like it was in the Old Testament in Isaiah chapter 6. When the prophet of God was touched for prophet, a coal from the altar was taken and his tongue, his tongue was touched. So we must come back even in this respect to the Word of God and say, Dear Lord, touch my soul, touch my heart, and please also touch my tongue. That our tongues will be placed into the service of Almighty God. There we could say, very many things about this subject, but coming to our point in this service, we understand that before 
there would turn the cross, there would be a mighty move of the Holy Spirit. And 36 times, 36, 36 times, Brother Francis spoke about the former and the latter reign. And finally, he said, the former and the latter reign will fall together, will fall together just before the Lord returns. Amen. So we understand from the Holy Scriptures that the Lord, in a supernatural way, will complete His own work of salvation as He completed His work of, of creation. It's not left to a prophet. Some believe that Brother Brennan will return, but where is the promise for that in the Holy Scriptures? And believe me, if there was one man on earth who could not understand why Brother Brennan was taken, it was Brother Brennan. Because I loved him. I was together with him. I drove in the same car, ate with him at the same time. Was in his meetings in Germany, in his meetings in the USA. For me, he was a man sent from God with the word of God to the people of God. But then, when, when he was taken and even taken after an accident, you can imagine how I felt. For me, the whole world had collapsed. And these eyes were the last ones who saw Brother Brennan in the coffin. I went up the wooden stairs to the street that could. And there was only one, one, one room in that funeral home. And in this one room, in Brother Brennan's the coffin was. I tell you, I wept for hours, I wept for hours and was talking to the Lord, saying, Lord, how can the bride of Christ be complete and made ready without this ministry? And you can just imagine, I did not see a moment because our beloved brother was leading the singing, only believe, only believe, I didn't sing. And the next hymn, was on the wings of a snow white dove. At that moment, I, I didn't sing. You know, for two hours, I did not sing. I wept. Asking the Lord, how could this be? Why? But then, when I returned from the funeral, came back into the hotel room, I sat down. And just believe what I say. The peace of God entered my soul. And this time, I did not hear a voice. But it spoke in my heart. Now your time has come. Now your time has come. To go from city to city, from country to country, to share the message the promised word of God for this day. And I returned to Germany and I started the international ministry sharing the word of God with the nations. So we understand we're not in the dark. We understand the promises for this day. We recognize the day will recognize the promises God made in His Word. And therefore, we are children of promise. I've said this many times, but it's good to repeat it. When the Apostle Paul was writing to the Galatians in chapter 4, 28, he brethren as Isaac was are the children of promise. Children of promise believe the word of promise and 
receive the spirit of promise. It goes to God. If you don't believe the promise is God made, you're not a child of promise. No. And you can be anointed, but you're not yet sealed by the Holy Spirit. It's a big difference in being anointed or being sealed. That Brother Brennan put it in a very, very good picture. He said, if a railroad man is packing the wagon before the seal, before the seal is put on the outside, everything on the inside must be perfectly arranged. And only if the inspector comes and sits with his own eyes that everything is perfectly arranged, then the door is closed and the seal is being put on and cannot be opened until the destination. Until the destination. So our life we must come back to the scripture pattern, the, the inside and also the outside must be renewed. We must find our place in the word of God and then the Lord will have his way with all of us. As we were referring to the meetings in in the Congo Republic, beloved, let me share this with you. It was one of the oldest friends of Brother Brandon, Sidney Jackson. Sidney Jackson, one of the old friends of Brother Brandon. And he was not only Brother Brandon's friend, he was my friend. And when he invited me in 1968 to come to Africa, that's when it all began. When it all began on the whole continent to share the precious word of God. And please excuse me for making this remark. But then, but then, the American influence came. And I say this as a German, but I don't have a national spirit. I don't have a national passport, but not a national spirit. I have the Holy Spirit. And we must want, we must want that a national spirit does not come into, into the picture. Our beloved brothers in the USA, we refer to the friend, oh, this Jew, this Jew. But they shouldn't do it. They never say this American or this or this. They never say that. But because I've taken my stand on the word of God from the very, very beginning, and also in reference to, to Brother Brennan. As you know, they were baptizing you the name of William Mary Brennan. They were believing that that was the new name of God. And now they believe that the new name of God is Joseph Mary Brennan. They believe many things which are not according to the word of God. And that a friend must open his mouth, he must share the true word of God. I know what God has Don't fear. Since 1958, every sermon Brother Brandon preached was sent to me in Germany. I grew up under his ministry. And I heard every sermon once, twice, three times. And then I translated all the sermons into the German language. I know them in and out. But I would never stand if anyone says anything that is not found in the Word of God. Even when they claim the second thunder revelation, 
one sister to one sister, forget it. Just leave it to God. Leave it to God. He will take care of it. And what people don't know, beloved, is this. That I was together with Brother Brennan just weeks before the opening of the seven saints. He asked me to preach for him in Los Angeles because he was packing. He was packing in December 1962. He was packing and he told me, God showed him a vision. He must leave to, to, to go to Arizona to do some. And he did ask for a friend to preach for him in Los Angeles for the full gospel businessman's fellowship. And the meeting was arranged by Dean Shikari. I was never in Los Angeles before. I never heard about this fellowship of this man. But because Brother Brennan has me said, I must go, I cannot go to, to Los Angeles. I must beg because of the vision the Lord showed me. I must move to Tucson. And of course, I said, of course, I will go. But I just want you to know that I was part of what God was doing in all, in all this. Even to the moment when the supernatural cloud appeared. I tell you, the articles which are now being written, and you can have them in the internet, what they say about it, it cannot be repeated. Misunderstandings everywhere and anywhere, and I say that. I cannot understand misunderstandings. I cannot understand misinterpretations. And even there, exactly what is 69 times or 70 times, when Brother Brennan referred to the seven thunders, they were seven natural thunderclaps when the earthquake took place. And Brother Green took us to Sunset Mountain, I saw with my own eyes the rocks that had come down and they were all laying there, rolling down when this earthquake took place and the seven thunders were heard. It was natural thunders and because of Revelation 10, Brother Brennan showed his ministry and then he spoke about those thunders which appeared when the supernatural cloud came down and he was told to return to Jefferson Hill and to speak on the seven seas. But why should I mention all these things to you? I tell you, I reached the moment when I said, Lord, I must leave the rest with you. Many times I said, Moses started when he was 18, yeah. and now I'm 18. Yeah. So I said, I will finish at 18. Moses started at 18, I will finish at 18, and leave the rest of the Lord, so that he can complete his work. But anyway, I want you to understand this. The responsibility, that I do have, whether you believe it or not, is the greatest on the face of the earth at this time. There is no president, there is no king, there is no queen, there is no one having the same responsibility to share God's holy and precious word, including all the promises with God's people, giving the last call, the call of preparation, separation, and restoration to, to see the bride, to see the bride come into the, the situation, into the position, so that the bridegroom, the bridegroom can finish his work in all of us. We will not have our own ways, our own thoughts, our own interpretations. 
that the confusion will stop and the Lord will have his way with his people. If you would feel like I do, the burden, the pain, the pain, everywhere there are groups of this and groups of that. Why do you have confusion? God is not in confusion. In the beginning, all the believers were one heart and one soul. But today, today, everybody has his own way. So please understand, I will not speak plain today. I want you to know that the return of our Lord is very, very near. I want you to know that the message of the hour has reached the ends of the earth. According to Matthew chapter 24, verse 14, this gospel of the kingdom will be preached to all nations and then the end will break. So the gospel as never before. Please tell me, was it 50 years ago possible? Was it 30 or 20 years possible? How did Brother Brandon enjoy when he heard that via telephone some were listening to his service by telephone, by telephone transmission? Today, people in all the countries, over 1,200 connections all over the earth, in all the main languages, and just rest a button here and a button there, and they join us in, in the messages that are being shared with God's people. So, scriptures being fulfilled, the divine information, the last message is granted and given to the people because the God called me to go from city to city. And I'm going to write in a circular letter the times the Lord addressed me as my servant. As my servant. With these ears. With these ears. For these years, I heard his voice. And the moment when he addressed me, would directly say, My servant, your time for this city will soon be over. I will send you to other cities to preach my word. That's just as true as every word in this book. As every word in this book. So you have to understand the burden I have. The heart goes out to God's people to understand the message of the hour in the correct way. Not to interpret, not to add, not to take away, but to, to put everything into the right place. Even when you was with my servant, don't establish local churches. Yes, yes, I serve and don't establish the churches. And the number of times the Lord had rested, I shared this, uh, I think, the last time with you, when I was in Marseille. And for the first time, brothers from Armenia, from Armenia, had come into the service asking me, please, uh, let us know about the seven thunders. That was the first time these years have heard about seven thunders. I have no answer. I just said, yes, I'm sorry. And I said good night. But the next morning, the next morning, the Lord woke me up with a tremendous voice, penetrating through everything that you are. My servant rise and breathe, said in Timothy chapter 4. You can imagine what that means. So I jumped up. I read 2 Timothy chapter 4 from verse 1 to 5. And when I 
end it with verse 5. Let's start it again with verse 1. I charge you before God, who will judge the living and the dead, at his coming and, and so forth. You read it, and in verse 2, preach the word. Amen. If we in time or out of time, all the time will come when they will not endure some doctrines and so forth. Brothers and sisters, I knew, I knew, what the seven vendors said is not written has not become part of the word of God and therefore can never be preached. Amen. Even if an angel will come from heaven and say, have you got the revelation of the seven thunders that we have to tell please return to where we came from and leave me alone. Those things are just, it's, it, it's an absolute. If you don't preach, and says, read 2 Timothy chapter 4. And where it says, preach the word. Well, the word is here. The word is here. It's all here. It's, all here. it's not philosophy. The word is the word. Preach the word. So I must preach the word of God. And leave all the other things to the Lord. So please understand. I'm an old man, I did what the Lord called me to do. I served him day and night, so all these years, sharing the true word of God, publishing the different subjects, and letting God's people know the promises for this day, and the rest I must leave to the Lord. Divine revelation comes by the Holy Spirit. Amen. Even the greatest prophet can come and speak unless God opens your understanding. And unless you believe before you can have a divine revelation, you must believe Amen. the word of God. Amen. I will not say that if you don't believe in me, you will die in your sins. And before the word of God can be revealed to you, you must believe. You must believe. If you don't believe what God said, He will not even talk to you. Why should He talk to you if you don't believe what He said? What? What? To repeat? No. Please. As our Lord said, He that has it here, let him hear what the Spirit says unto the churches. Amen. In summarizing, let me say this to our brothers and sisters. Now repeat me for the third or fourth time. The signs of the time speak a loud voice and language to let us know that we're not only in the end time, we are at the end of the end time. And even as I referred now to the negotiations about Jerusalem between the Vatican, can you imagine, can you imagine how many have a little picture about Jerusalem, about the Mount of Olives, about the Temple Mountain, about Mount Zion, and the most holy place for the Jews is the Temple Mountain and Mount Zion. And Mount Zion stretches right up from the Temple Mountain going up to the peak. And there was the Last Supper, and there was the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And I'm one who was in Israel many times, maybe 24 or 25 times. And every time I took groups, we went to Mount Zion and we sang choruses there in that place where the outpouring of the Holy Spirit place. And now the Vatican will get that place. 
so that a package of all over the earth will come to Jerusalem and on this holiest place they will have a, what they call a, a place where, where all the masses and that will work together. When I read this, when I read this, I was again told in mind. I said, Lord, how long? How long will you have patience? How far can they go? How far can they go? They don't want to go into details about the perfect scripture of Zechariah 14 or Daniel 12 and other scriptures, but it just hurts. It hurts. And because the Jews did not understand and accept the time of their divine visitation, they are blinded after this day. And because they, they, the contract must be made, there's one concession after the other, one point after the other, and from the 21 points that were negotiated, only this one has remained, and the announcement was, now it will not take years, it will only take a few months when the contract can be signed. So I say again, nobody knows the day, nobody knows the hour, but I'm telling you, I'm telling you, where at the end of the end time, the, the coming of the Lord is near, even for your information. The same day, in 1946, when the UN made the statement that the Jews had a right to their own country, in 1946, in 1948, the, the state of Israel was announced on May the 14th. But in 1946, in Los Angeles, the United Nations declared that Israel has a right to have their own state. And just, just after that, the same day, the angel of the Lord appeared to Brother Brennan on May the 7th, 1946. And how does Brother Branham emphasize it over and over again and say, just a few hours, then when the sun went down, then in the morning, the angel of the Lord appeared. The same day, the same day when Israel was declared to be or to become a nation. So it's all, it's all fulfilling about the prophecies. When you see the fig tree come back to life again, then you know, you don't guess, you don't dream. It's not your fantasy. When you see the fig tree come back to life again, when you see Israel return to the homeland, then this generation shall not ask to all things be for the beloved brothers and sisters. That's Bible. That's the word of God. Open your eyes, open your hearts, see the Bible prophecies for them. Recognize the day of God's visitation and come to the Lord and say, Here I am. Renew my heart, renew my life. Just do whatever you wish to do. But let that part in what you are doing right now. May I ask how many wish to be ready for the return of our Lord? Of course, everybody. Otherwise, you wouldn't be here. You wouldn't come to hear the word of God. So we do have the message of the hour. We do have the promises of God's word. And even this might be interesting for you. When Brother Brandon on February the 10th, 1960, said in reference to the message, he said not that I would forerun the second coming, but the message, the message would forerun the second coming of Christ. Brother Brandon, in his lifetime, his feet stepped exactly on the soil of 15 countries. In 12 countries, he shared the word of God. 
And now we included the whole earth, the whole earth, into the program of God for your interest. The group in Mongolia, the group in, in Beijing, wherever they are, all the bride of Christ joins us in hearing the word of God getting ready for the second coming of Christ. So this day is meant to be a preparation time, a time that you make a decision and go back to God and say, Lord, I wish to be right in my singing, with my tongue, with my heart, with everything. I wish to be right in your presence. I wish to be ready when you return. I refer to a number of scriptures. I did read one verse, but you all know the word of God. Coming back finally to Matthew 3, 11, when John said, I baptize you with water. He that comes after me will baptize you with the Holy Ghost and fire. May this be your desire today. That you not only say, Lord, I wish to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. That you pray. That you pray and say, Lord, let the Holy Fire of God touch my tongue. Touch my tongue. That my tongue will be placed in the, into the service of Almighty God. And that you say, let it be in the whole Pentecostal movement. Everybody believes what they believe in the Trinity and in, in the many different directions. And we all say, we're baptized in the Holy Spirit. Well, as the scripture said, they that are led by the Holy Spirit, they are the true children of God. So it's not only being baptized, but the heart, the soul, the tongue, the whole body must be a sacrifice unto the Lord and say, here I am. May this be the day, beloved, when our desire will be Lord Jesus. Just make me the way you want me to be, and let me be ready for the moment of your return. Amen. And for this I just read one verse from Matthew chapter 25. Matthew chapter 25, known, known to all of us. Matthew 25. Verse 10. Matthew 25, verse 10. You are not. And while they were going to buy the oil to drive from the cave, and the door was closed, and they that were ready went into the marriage guest, and the door was closed. I ask the Lord, I said, Dear Lord, I will obey the command, I will obey the provision. But I have one, one great petition, one desire, that all who hear your words from my lips, that they will believe you and you are ready for your return, I wish to see them again. I am not only here to see you today, or to speak to you today. I am here for one purpose, that we together meet the Lord when He returns, that we shall be in the rapture by the grace of Almighty God. And I can assure you, if you believe, the promised word of God for this day. You are a child of promise. And you will see that final promise fulfilled by the grace and power of Almighty God. May the blessings of the Lord rest upon you all. Let us stand for a word of prayer. And if there are especially requests that we can bring before the throne of God, you realize that very tired of my life.
Let the word of God, is your living word, a powerful word, and the word will never return void, but accomplish what it was sent for. And the last message is a direct call to the bride of Christ. And he that has his ear, let him hear what the Spirit says unto the church. And then our Lord speaks to all of you, to all of us. Blessed are your eyes for the sin. Blessed are your ears for the hear. For many prophets would have loved to sing what we say, love to hear what we hear, but they could not and did not. We are a privileged generation, a privileged people, ordained to eternal life. And before the foundation of the world, our names were written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Beloved brothers and sisters, receive it with all your hearts. He was in the blood of the Lamb. The Lamb of God took away the sins of the world. Your sins, my sins, our sins. And we were reconciled with God. And as the prophet Isaiah, by the Holy Spirit, prayed, if our sins are red like scarlet, they shall be white as snow. By the grace of God, our Lord God sees us through the blood. We are redeemed. We are children of God. And by faith, we receive the word of God, the true seed of God, into our hearts. And the Holy Spirit comes upon us, and the new life, the life of Christ, is manifested in us. My question is, beloved, do you have the honest desire in your heart to say, I'm crucified with Christ? Now I live no more, but Christ lives his life to life. That this day will be a special day for you. The day of God's visitation. Now let us pray for those who have special requests. If you wish to raise your hand, if you have that special request, may me. Many, many men. Oh God in heaven, where the promises from your lips, whatever we pray in your holy name, that shall be granted unto us. Dear Lord, you know all the petitions, you know all the problems, whether they're spiritual, physical, natural. Dear Lord, I pray that this will be a special day, the day to my for salvation, for deliverance, for healing, for the blessings of Almighty God to come upon those who believe you. And dear Lord, together we claim every soul for the kingdom of God. We claim every soul for the pride of Christ to be part in what God is doing now. Dear Lord, I commit all things to you and I thank you for the blood, for the word, for the Holy Spirit. I thank you for what you have done here today. You have done a great work. Especially those who did not fully believe, but now believe with all their hearts, with all their soul. 
and you will bless them abundantly. Dear Lord, strengthen my body, help me to serve you until the moment you return. And I wish to meet you with all my brothers and sisters who are gathered here today. I thank the soul. I thank the soul. By the love of Christ, by the word of God, by the promises of God, I claim every soul present for the kingdom of God, for the bride of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. And dear Lord, may it become true those who were ready went into the marriage and did almost May this be a day you prepare for us to get ready for your return. May the blessings of Almighty God rest upon you all. Be sanctified in the truth. The work of God is the truth. Protect every interpretation. Protect every misunderstanding. Protect and be filled by the Holy Spirit. And be led by the Holy Spirit into the Word of God. In Jesus' holy name. In what we saw. In what we saw. By the grace of God. Receive it. Believe it. And it's yours. In the name of Jesus Christ. Our Lord. Amen.
Il y a ce fait pour Sachi Love, pour Sachi Love, express for us. There are no ways to describe the joy and the feeling of such an assurance. Lord, you are coming soon. And we are so, so grateful that you have chosen to make us partake of your problem. Lord, it is not by our mind. It's not because we are something special. It is your grace, Lord. Amen. And we thank you for such a wonderful Lord. Thank you, Lord, that we are come to the children of the kingdom. Amen. That we are partaker of your program. Amen. That you have opened up our eyes that we can see. Amen. And that our ears can hear Amen. what we are just doing right now. Amen. We thank you, Lord, for Matthew 24, 25. Amen. That we can see with our own eyes. Amen. That we are partaker of this program. Amen. Lord of God, all our prayer now, let that you speak, not only as he revealed this way to us, but let the Spirit of God guide us. Oh, this is even the evidence that we are your children. For the Bible says, the Spirit of God are led by the Spirit of God. Be with us, God, that we walk according to your Spirit. Thank you for everyone who has come. And thank you for the ministry of these days. Now that we have come to the end of the meeting, Lord, we just want to commit ourselves to your work. That you may guide us in the rest of the program. Grant us that tomorrow things from heaven may descend on the leaders and that we may experience them. We thank you, Lord. And we trust that everything that we have in the rest of the day has been given to us. Amen. Thank you for us. In the blessed name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we have prayed. Amen. 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 May the Lord bless you all, and especially all these preachers. May the Lord also bless you. We don't have time to let one and you know, the other to come and read. The most important thing is that we all can hear to report the word of God. Read the word of God and read John. But just in case you hear the word of God, or you heard it, you want to have a decision, or you want to know where we got it. And so that you can begin to come and hear the word of God, then of course, do not hesitate to contact us. When the meeting is over and people are dispersing, you can find that uh, any one of us has asked for maybe the address of the place where we gather, and uh, you are good, you are invited, you are... Welcome to come and hear the word. But should you decide to truly give your heart to the Lord? The Bible says that, you know, uh, he that believeth and is baptized, the same shall be saved. So if you believe, of course, we are going to take you to the waters of baptism. So should anybody have heard the word of God and they decide to give their heart to the Lord, do not hesitate also to contact us. We can arrange all these things, including baptism, for you. So may the Lord bless you. Amen. Grab it by, where are you?